Joshua Treadway. We're heading up to Missouri to hunt with my good friend Bo at the hunting grounds that I met at the Hunter's Extravaganza several years ago. I was at the Texas Trophy Hunter Show in Houston and uh, of course checking out all the booths and I went by Bo's booth and got to talking to him and he asked me if I was interested in buying a raffle ticket for a hunt at his place in Missouri and I bought a few tickets and a couple months later I was going down the road working and my phone rang, didn't really recognize the number, I picked it up and it was Bo called me to inform me that I had won the raffle. So that was my first trip here. Yeah, the hunting grounds is a nice place to hunt. I mean, it's, you know, the, the terrain out here is a lot more undulating than you would imagine for Missouri. We're in the Ozark Mountains, so when you get here, it's not at all what I was expecting the first time. The, the elevation change out here is really crazy for, for being in Missouri. It's not something that I would have ever pictured here. If you're here at the right time, the rut's a really special time here. You get to see a lot of deer chasing and fighting and all that good stuff. It's everything you'd want out of a whitetail experience. Just got to Missouri, getting everything unloaded for the weekend. Just met with the guys up here. I think we're gonna get our guns sighted in and maybe go look around a little bit and see if we can find a place to hunt in the morning. So the first morning we headed out, uh, pretty excited to get out in the woods. We chose a box blind the first morning. Uh, we didn't see a whole lot of deer the first morning. We saw some does, a few smaller bucks chasing, nothing we were really interested in. Uh, with the, the lack of movement, we knew it was time. We better check some trail cameras and see if we could find an area that they were using more and maybe get some pop-up blinds out, get them brushed in in some good areas that we were trying to find some travel travel corridors. We are going to go and attempt to find us a spot to put a ground blind, see if we can't find a place they're moving around at. We didn't have much luck sitting in a box blind this morning. Let's see if we can't find a spot they're moving. We got a big, big scrape right here. You see they kind of break the branches off and mark it up. We know there's a couple of big bucks using this and there's a couple more that go down this little road here. They come off of this ridge down the straw through all this timber, and they come down through this bottom and go to some other fields to feed after they stop here. So we're gonna try to get them as they come off the ridge before they get across here. It'll have to be kind of a quick deal, but I think that we can possibly get it done if they come and give us enough time from the top. So we're gonna check it out and try here tonight and see what happens. spot I think we kind of know where the deer are moving. Um, I've switched guns, got the swagger sticks put on this gun that way we don't have to get the barrel all the way out the window because if they do come in here they're going to be right up on top of us really fast so we're probably not going to have a long time to shoot and I don't want anything sticking out of the blind so I think we're in a pretty good spot we want some deer moving through here and we'll see what happens. So we hunted the pop-up blind that was set up and had a nice hunt. A lot of does, a lot of small bucks. We had one decent buck come in, mid-30s kind of buck. Just not what we were looking for, not a mature buck, a little on the small side for Missouri, you know, as far as body size went. So we gave him a pass and decided to maybe look for a, another area. Had a lot of movement, just not the right deer this afternoon. A lot of does, a lot of little bucks. Just didn't have anything coming through to check these does, so we might look at some trail cam pictures and see what we got and what we can think of. Maybe come up with a new plan in the morning. We might move around a little bit. We'll see. A lot of times when you're whitetail hunting, obviously, the longer you sit in the same place, the better. It's the law of probability. Sooner or later, a deer is gonna walk by. But just with the lack of movement we were seeing, 
You could tell the deer were rutting, but we felt like maybe they were in lockdown or maybe with the moon, they were running all night long and kind of bedding up during the day. So we really knew that we had to utilize the trail cams to figure out where they were during daylight hours when we could actually get a shot and, and kind of show us the spots where we could maybe put some ground blinds in areas that they were using as a travel area. We've been out checking trail cameras today. Um, we thought the deer were, we knew they were up in this area in this thicket, and we thought they were dropping off the hill and going down to the food plots where we were hunting before, but for whatever reason, they're not coming down. We did, during the middle of the day, uh, try to do some spotting and stalking. Um, we were a little frustrated. that We weren't seeing the, the bucks that we wanted to see in the mornings and afternoons. So we tried to spot and stalk during the middle of the day, but with it being fall and all the leaves being off the trees and there's not a lot of moisture on the ground right now, so the leaves are crunchy and there's just absolutely no way to get on a deer in these big timber woods without letting them know you're there 200 yards before you see them. So we saw a whole lot of white tails and not a whole lot of horns. On a normal basis, the last few years that I've been here, you know, you have to hunt hard to find a mature buck, but there's plenty of mature bucks here. And it's just for whatever reason this time, it was a little bit more of a struggle than normal. Uh, I think we got here and it was a full moon and the moon was still up during the day. You know, I think the bucks were locked down with does. The, the does that we did see when we were out walking or walking to a blind or stalking, you know, if you saw a doe, most of the time she was bedded up with a buck right over her. A lot of times in a spot that there was no way we could possibly get to. So we, just, we felt like this time they were, they were in a lockdown. We just kind of maybe weren't here on the perfect week. It was just really out of the ordinary for this place in my experience. Got a little bit colder last night, so kind of felt like the deer would probably be moving again. Maybe, hopefully, turn back on. So we're gonna go get back on a green field, and hopefully we can catch something chasing this morning. That morning we were really excited before we went out to hunt. We had breakfast and we felt like we had a really good plan. Uh, we hadn't really sat that blind much in the morning time and we really thought that we'd see some deer eating on the food plot that morning. But we had a farmer's dog that had other ideas and he barked off in the distance all morning long, probably the first hour and a half of the hunt. And I don't know if that had anything to do with it or if they had been up running all night. I really don't know, but that morning all we were able to see was just a few does and one. One buck that, you know, had very nice, you know, rack, good looking deer. It's going to be something special in the future, but just not what we were looking for. Probably a two and a half or three year old deer. The buck that came by, it'll be a, a really nice, big, big buck. When he gets some age on him, he's just too young. That's not what we're here for. Looking for a mature buck, regardless of how big his antlers are, we want to kill one that's five or six years old. So we let him slide on by. The pop up blinds just weren't working out. We had tons and tons of trail cam pictures that we went through, and we knew the deer were there, but we just couldn't catch them. We were in the wrong place, 
at the right time, I guess, every single time. We just couldn't find the deer. So we decided to try an elevated blind and we moved to a uh, elevated stand above a wheat field that we knew the does loved to eat in at night. And with the rut going on, you know, we figured if we could get the does in front of us, inevitably we'd have to see a buck. The food plot actually turned out to be a good choice. Sure enough, we had a really nice nine point come out, split G2, big bases, you know, the kind of deer you dream about, but we went back and forth talking about the age on him, and we just didn't feel like he was an old enough deer to shoot. Uh, you know, the, the, they try to shoot mature bucks here, and we were right on the fence about it and just decided that he wasn't for us. So the sun's going down and the does are still all eating out on the field. The big nine point's still there. Uh, we were really out of camera light, but we weren't gonna move, you know, we weren't gonna get out of the box until it was, it was dark and the does had moved off the field. We didn't wanna spook anything out of there because obviously we might need to sit there again. And right before dark, out steps a big old rat. He only gave us two or three seconds to, to judge him for his age, and he just blew past us chasing a doe, and you know, I'm thinking to myself, well, I may have missed my only opportunity. So right there at the end, we had a pretty good buck come out. He took us a minute to decide whether he was old enough, if he was something we wanted. By the time we did, he was chasing a doe. Just didn't really stop, but camera light wasn't very good, and it just got by us. Uh, but that's one we definitely hope we'll see in the morning, maybe. We went back to the lodge after the hunt and talked to Bo and kind of reviewed our camera footage and, and he did reassure us that that buck was in the age class that we do want to shoot. So, you know, I'm kicking myself a little bit that even though the camera light was low, that maybe I didn't try to take that shot anyway and hoping, you know, that I'd get another chance at him. And here we go right here, boom. We need to be there in the morning. The next morning, it's the last day, of course, which everybody hates coming down to the last day, and you're just hoping, you know, gosh, I hope I'm not going home empty-handed. But we felt like the blind that we had been in, where we saw the shooter, was probably the best place to go back to. Uh, we felt like he's probably in that area. So we went in there with really high hopes in the morning, and nothing. The hunt, you know, it's dwindling down. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time left. It's midday. So we just decided, you know, it's, you know, fourth and long time. And instead of working travel corridors and food plots and all that stuff, we just went, took off, went straight towards their bed. So we've been working the bedding areas, not having a whole lot of luck. And we're kind of stopped and taking a break and deciding how long do we want to do this before we go get back in the blind for the last sit? We were going to walk back and walk into the top of the ridge and look over in a thick spot and there's a doe standing there. And 
kind of moved around to get a little better look to see if maybe there was a buck in there, and boom, there he was. He's laying right beside her in the thick stuff. There's a buck laying down right there. He's definitely not leaving her. He's, he's with her. He's not going anywhere. So we made a quick move around to the end of this little piece of timber. And I'm just waiting for him to stand up. And he read the script, stood right up, and I had it on him. And then, bam, he turns around and walks directly away from me. I got no shot. We took off ran around the other side of the timber, try to cut him off, try to get in position. So I got the swagger sticks ready. I put the crosshairs on him. Yeah, your name. Shoot him. Got a good trigger pull, squeezed the trigger, threw out a big mule kick, started going downhill through the timber. So, you know, that's always a good sign, but, you know, you want to see them fall until you got your hands on them. You know, you're always worried a little bit. He's hit good. So we shot the buck up here on the top of this draw. We've been following him down the side here. It looks like he's bleeding really good. Um, hasn't gone too far, maybe 100 yards. We're gonna keep following the blood though because it's a pretty good trail. See where it goes. So we worked down through the timber, down to the creek, and you know, he had a really good blood trail to follow. and. It looked like he tried to go go to the creek, go to the water and get across it, and he just didn't make it. He was tangled up in some big tree roots right on the edge of the creek. <laughs> Good Lord of mercy. It was a great feeling when I, when I saw the deer laying by the creek, you know. We had really worked hard this week. Uh, we had had some hard luck. Uh, we had really had to grind it out. And you know, when I, when I came down the hill and saw him laying there, huge body, really pretty rack, my biggest year ever. It was just a really good end to the, to the week, you know, a really good end to the story. We had worked really hard for something and it was great to see him laying there. So, oh, we've been here for almost a week. We got here, we thought the deer were supposed to be rutting. They kind of were, we thought, then they kind of weren't. We really just didn't know what they were doing. It's been really slow. We've only seen a few bucks. We've actually only seen, this is only the second mature buck we've seen. I'm pretty sure this is the buck that we saw last night when we were running out of camera light. Notice this G4's broke off. I think this is the same buck that, that we had come in last night that we just couldn't, couldn't decide whether he was mature, couldn't decide whether he was a shooter until it was too late and we were just out of camera light. I have no idea what this deer scores. I could care less. I, I know he's got to be my biggest deer. This is a giant Missouri buck. I'm really happy to have him. I, you know, actually I'd never, never, ever probably taken a buck of this caliber unless I'd started going to the Hunter Extravaganza show and, and met old Bo and won that, that first raffle and started coming here. Beautiful deer, got these split brow tines, got this big extra point here broke something off. This was broke off when we saw him before. Kind of, I think he may have broke this off. Just a beautiful deer. Guess he's a 13 all total. Pretty nice deer.